Hello, everyone. I hope you are enjoying your uh, Dev Summit. And um, after I have very big shoes to fill, I think uh, James has given so much about Xamarin. So I'll, I'll try to cover up as much as I can uh, for Blazor. So uh, my session is full stack web development without JavaScript. Uh, so before starting, let me tell me something about myself. I'm a certified Azure Solution Architect community speaker and founder of dot, dot .co techies. Uh, my, all my social handles are techie Rathor. So if you just Google techie Rathor, you can find me everywhere. So without further, uh, further ado, let's get started with the agenda for today. So today, uh, my first, uh, like we'll talk about full stack development decision confusions. What we have, what is full stack development uh, full stack web development. What are the confusions developer face during uh, doing full stack development? Then we will talk about what is Blazor. How does uh, it solve this problem? Uh, we'll uh, I'll show you uh, something about the Blazor project structure. What are the controls? How it works and all those things. Then we'll see uh, the difference between various Blazor uh, hosting models. And then we'll see uh, some of the third party libraries which are available for Blazor. Uh, and what are the future possibilities or what are the possibilities with Blazor? What kind of applications you can develop, which uh, what people are doing and what we can do in uh, uh, future. And of course, at the end, we'll talk about how to get started with Blazor. And then I'll take some questions. So when we talk about full stack web developer, the official definition for full stack web developer is that someone who can work on both backend and front end. So someone who knows about all the backend and frontend technologies. Usually uh, the frontend technologies are mainly based on JavaScript technologies. Like you have Angular, Vue, uh, React as a frontend, and then you have .NET, Node, Java, Deno, uh, these as a backend. So when we see in the form of uh, a diagram, we can see here like this, that when we are doing a full stack development, we have a backend like this, which has Node, .NET, Go, or Java. And we have a frontend like this, where we have Angular, React, Vue, or any kind of JS framework, which communicate with the backend. So this is fine, this is good, but the problem is like, there is a lot of problems with this kind of approach. The problem is, the first one is, whole lot of people don't like JavaScript. Like it's it's not like that they don't like it. It's like they are not comfortable with it. Uh, many people who are working on, who have worked on Windows application, uh, who have worked on ASP.NET, uh, regular ASP.NET web forms or uh, regular ASP.NET MVC, who has not done work much on JavaScript, they face a lot of issues or they are not that much comfortable on learning JavaScript framework because they are, uh, there are many issues behind that, like they are dynamically typed, they have uh, issues with the browser support, uh, and it changes too fast. Like you have every, uh, after every year or so, you have new JavaScript framework with completely new uh, changes and new features. So in that scenario, another problem is like, uh, most of these JavaScript frameworks follow the single page architecture framework. So if you see uh, for single page architecture, the problems we face are we have two different teams, the front end team and the back end team. And the front end team is most in most of the cases, they are on a different technology, whether it is uh, like uh, .NET or Go or Java, they, they are working on a different technology. So they have different uh, code base and back end. It, it's almost like when we talk about native mobile development, where we have different teams for doing different tasks. Similarly, training to be a full stack web developer is a costly affair. And when we uh, use different language than JS in backend, then sharing code logic is also a problem. And now currently most of the application have different backend than JS. They, uh, they are either written in .NET or they are moving towards .NET Core or they are written in Java or uh, other technologies. So the, the, there are a lot of these problems in uh, when we follow this current approach of developing web applications using JavaScript as a front end and different technologies as a back end. Especially the problem is for uh, 
dot net developers who are in the middle of their career so they have to move uh, they are growing so they think that what should we do which technology we should go on so we have blazer as a solution for this so what is blazer blazer is basically a free and open source web framework that enables developer to create web apps using c sharp and html so it you don't have to learn javascript for this thing yes your javascript knowledge will be of course an added advantage but you don't require that much javascript that which you need to learn in case of developing web ui using regular frameworks that is uh, angular react or vue because they all have different approaches to follow even jquery has a different approach so even if you just know simple javascript or jquery it will work like uh, it will work well another thing is it uses razor syntax so the people who are already working on asp.net mvc or who are working on asp.net core mvc it is very easy for them to learn because it uses the regular razor syntax and it uses the component based single page architecture so it uses the same component based single page architecture which is used in all the new technologies that is angular react or any other uh, front end framework so it uses this component based architecture there are currently two hosting models for hosting your uh, blazor application one is blazor server and another one is blazor web assembly so blazor server is uh, like available uh, you can host it on the server using dotnet core base and blazor web assembly you can even host as a static site so these are currently two hosting models available for uh, blazor development so when we talk about now when uh, full stack development using blazor so you can see we have again we have the same back end uh, technologies but for front end we have blazor for doing all the task which we used to do for that we have to do earlier using couple of different languages so we need we need not to learn so many languages we can do everything with the same c sharp and net so if you are a c sharp developer and you have a dotnet background or dotnet backend you can very easily move to front end uh, using blazor so why you should be interested in this so the first is of course c sharp is a fantastic language it's not like javascript is not but yes c sharp is very good language because it has more capabilities it has more uh, features as compared to javascript another one is that since blazor is based on asp.net core it the performance wise blazor is much more faster it is uh, as you know like asp.net core is number 7th on tech empower uh, performance listing it's eight times more faster than node js so when uh, when you host a blazor server app on asp.net core uh, or .net core it is available and it is much more faster than node much more faster than django and much more faster than any other server and of course the best benefit is that you can share logic with existing .net background right now i have uh, developed a couple of application where i have used the same code which i have used in my web application and like the, you can share the same model so you don't have to write the different model for client and server you can use the same model classes uh, as dotnet standard library and uh, which i have done not only this you can even share the code with your xamarin application so most of uh, us people joining here are xamarin uh, developers so you can also share your code uh, with xamarin application so lot of code sharing is there so you don't need uh, to write new code for doing the uh, for client side development or so for client side applications and of course it consolidates the front end and back end team together and uh, it's more of a one team and uh, you become a complete full stack developer who knows almost everything almost end to end development so let's uh, with this let's go to some practical implementation so uh, right now i'm in uh, my windows machine where i have visual studio 2019 open so let's see how we can create a new blazor application it's pretty simple step many people have told you but let me 
repeat the process once again. It's very simple. It will load all the Razor templates and you can just select a Blazor app. It's already there in my recent application list. So I'll select the Blazor app and when I hit next, I can just give the name .net Summit and I hit the create button and we'll get the option to select the two options. So that is Blazor server and Blazor WebAssembly. And you can see whatever features we have for developing uh, our web application, uh, ASP.NET core web application, the same features we have that for Blazor also, whether you use Blazor server or Blazor WebAssembly. So when you use Blazor server, you have the option to implement authentication. You can use the individual user authentication, which is your identity server based authentication, or you can use the Windows authentication or Active Directory authentication. So you have the feature to implement authentication also. So whatever feature you have in regular ASP.NET Core applications, all those features are available in Blazor server as well as Blazor WebAssembly. When we select Blazor WebAssembly, we also have options to either, by default, it is a static uh, hosting. It doesn't support uh, like ASP.NET Core. If you select this option, it will show you the ASP.NET Core hosted uh, Blazor application. And if you select a progressive web application, it will by default give you the out of box or boilerplate code to, as your Blazor application to be a progressive web application. So uh, I'll go with the Blazor server app. And while it's creating this thing, so I'll I'll show. So this is this is our regular Blazor app. We see here we have our regular Blazor app, and let me show you the structure of this app. So as you uh, see, I I have used the server uh, setting ASP.NET Core server setting. So that's why Blazor server app. So that's why it's asking for ASP.NET Core. And you can see that it has the same structure of ASP that it has program.cs and it has startup.cs. So it has startup.cs, it has program.cs, and it uses the same uh, methods uh, and uh, functions of which we have in ASP.NET Core application. So you can see this is uh, like we are configuring the services here. We are adding the Razor pages and adding the server side Blazor. So this is for server side Blazor. And when we talk about the structure of the application, we have this thing. So this is the Blazor project structure. So we have one app.razor. So this app.razor is the base of the application. It is uh, the uh, complete base of your Blazor application, which loads the first page of the application. Even when the HTML is, uh, when the Blazor code is converted into HTML code, this app.razor, you will see that there is a tag called app and inside that all your Blazor uh, code will be uh, loaded. So let me run this thing and show you that source code and you will be able to better understand that. So while running, uh, while it is being run, uh, let me show you the rest of the thing. So we have this shared folder. Yeah, so this is coming up. So in the meantime, let me show you. So we have this shared folder. So this shared folder has main layout, nav menu, and this survey prompt. So these are all components. So as I said, these are uh, Blazor is basically a component based architecture. So you have everything as a component. These pages, all of these pages are component. So this uh, host.chtml, this is the first page or you can say the single page or SP architecture based page, which is uh, which host all the controls of the Blazor. And then this these rest of the pages are your uh, separate pages or you can say separate com components which you can utilize. So when I run this, so you can see this is running here and this counter application is running like this. And then we have this fetch data, which is showing the, this, this is the default or boilerplate Blazor control, uh, sorry, Blazor project template, which has all the Blazor uh, related features uh, implemented. 
so it has this thing and then we have this uh, forecast code and this so this is all component based architecture so you can see here this is all component based architecture this uh, counter page this you can see here this is a page component where we have this routing directive this is this basically this controls the url so this is counter is this routing url and you can see here that counter is starting here like this and you can see this one that this is the root here so if i want to change this thing like for example somebody wants to uh, start the counter with a certain value so what i can do is i can stop this thing and i can start this with counter slash so we can give something like this uh we have i think id so like this is or we can set this thing so right now current count is coming like this we'll see this one so and this will be public okay and we'll add this as an attribute as parameter so when i give this public parameter like this so by default it will be id as is giving me some error. okay so we have this so i have done this thing and what will happen by default i'm setting this int as zero so increment count is this zero so when i now run this application like this so and when i go on counter here it's giving some error so i think i have to uh, set some parameters and this thing this will be probably uh, i have to give this as integer i guess so i'm forgetting the syntax here but we can change this thing we can give the parameters like this uh, to the page and we can uh, do this uh, we can change the parameters and we can change the page what page we want to call and which different pages we want to use we can do all these changes not only this let's say this is the index page and i want to use counter here like this so if i put counter here like this and i run this code Um, hey Ravi, um, just a quick thing. Maybe you want to increase the font size a little bit so that everyone can okay. see it well. Okay. Uh, can everyone can see now? Yeah, it looks good now. Mm. okay so so when i run this thing now you can see here the counter is coming on the index page so when i click on this the so this is completely component based architecture another benefit of this uh, blazor being component based architecture is as i showed you this uh, this sample application is basically a blazor server application i have another application uh, here i have opened this one 
this is basically a uh, an sample application which i use for my blogs so <clears throat> this one so this is basically a sample application which i use for my blogs that is uh, tr blazer ex and i have implemented all the examples here uh, um ravi uh, if you're if you're showing the solution explorer maybe zoom in as well because uh, on the stream it's very low okay so let me let me see uh, i sorry do you have something like zoom installed yeah zoom uh, i'm i'm just increasing the fonts and this thing here okay right. So instead of this environment, and okay, I hope this is increased a bit. so i hope you guys can uh, see it now so this is uh, the blazor server uh, this is the sample application tr blazor ex which is available on my github i usually use this sample application in all my blogs so we have this blazor wasm here and we have this blazor server here both of these are two different project and just like xamarin what i have done in like in our xamarin application what we have is one common ui pay, uh, page uh, or sorry one common ui project which is our dotnet standard project similarly i we can create a razor class library which is again a dotnet standard project and we can uh, like do all the ui or we can move all the ui in this uh, razor class library and we can utilize this in both in blazor server as well as blazor wasm so let me show you this uh, run this application and this is the same project code but i have moved it in a uh, separate ui so if you see here let me run right now the default project is blazor wasm okay so if i run this thing it will show me so uh, the ui will be exactly same in both the scenario so this is how we can basically change or uh, yeah so if you see here it's loading so see this is blazor wasm so it's taking some time here and how we know that this is blazor wasm we'll go in the tools we we'll see in the developer tools and in the network section if you see here if i hit refresh you can see here so this is our blazor webassembly dot js is being called this is the local host js and this is the same application so it has counter i have moved the counter here as a component then i have created one checkbox list uh, list example so i have written a blog about creating a checkbox uh, checkbox list in blazor so uh, i have added this here in uh, in this project itself so you can see this is our blazor web assembly application and now if i want i can what i'll do i'll just stop this here and i'll set this server as a startup project so now i have set the server as a startup project and when i run this thing now so now you can see now that uh, error screen didn't came because now we are using the blazor server and if we see here you can go in tools developer tools and network now when i refresh this page you can see here we don't have the web assembly page you can see this we have bootstrap min and all those things we we don't have the web assembly page so sorry so we don't have the web assembly page so this is how what we can do is like blazor can give you the option to 
share your code between uh, blazor server and blazor web assembly and even the future implementations of blazor which will uh, i'll tell you uh, like what all further possibilities of blazor are like you can even create desktop applications using blazor so for that also you can use the same ui i have done uh, i am doing the same kind of implementation in couple of my applications and i uh, i have written a blog about this also that how we can create this thing let's see the as i was explaining the structures so these this shared section is your common uh, this is where you'll keep your common code that is your like uh, layouts and controls so layout is this main layout is it uses this layout component base which is basically used for it's similar to your layout dot razor in your uh, mvc application so this is where you can integrate uh, your nav menu and other things so this is main uh, layout page and i have as i have created this checkbox list dot razor as the shared project so this is uh, sorry shared page or shared control so that's why i have kept it uh, kept it here we can even move this uh, razor class library as a separate project uh, it's already a separate project so we can create a dll out of it and we can utilize in another razor application also similarly this imports dot razor is basically uh, imports uh, used for uh, declaring all the common uh, using statements so when we declare all the common using statements here we don't need to declare it in other pages or on the uh, various pages or controls which we are creating we don't need to declare this common here so we can utilize it uh, all the pages can inter uh, change their objects or whatever components we are using we can utilize this thing so using this we can done and if you see the implementation here in my regular blazor application in the pages we have this uh, host.cstml whereas if we see the blazor wasm structure so in blazor wasm we have host.index.html which is there in triple w root and in our blazor server we have this uh, pages and inside pages i have this host.cstml so you can see here in host.cstml we have this uh, blazor framework blazor server and in our index.html we have this blazor web assembly so this is how the component based architecture of blazor works basically okay so uh, let's move to slides now how we can share the logics and all those things so now we can see uh, what is uh, i showed you what are like what are the different hosting models of the blazor the server and blazor web assembly i also showed you what is the component structure of blazor how does blazor uh, works and how we can achieve a uh, common implement a common ui to utilize in both the hosting structure so when we should use which hosting structure let me tell you that so we have client side that is blazor web assembly we can use for developing progressive web apps you can see that while creating the project we, uh, itself we have the option to select the uh, project as a progressive web app so if we want to create a progressive web app with a zero uh, latency ui or we want to host static files or we want to uh, create a offline applications in all these scenario we can use blazor web assembly when we talk about blazor server so if you want to use a thin client application or even a regular web application uh, and you want to utilize the full runtime support of dotnet server or blazor server uh, sorry dotnet core then you can use blazor server so if you are using blazor server you will get all the dotnet core support uh, all the uh, features which are there in asp.net or dotnet core framework you will be able to utilize those features on blazor server and of course in some scenarios like you are creating some application or something which is uh, basically copyrighted for your uh, company in that scenario also you can use blazor server because all the code is on the server another thing uh, another benefit of blazor server is that you can move your uh, like your current web form application because even microsoft is writing a documentation and uh, like uh, 
Jeffrey Frizz or C sharp Frizz is uh, creating Blazor web forms control. So uh, you can migrate your current web forms applications to a Blazor server application. So uh, Microsoft is uh, suggesting this thing, and many people are doing that. That you can uh, convert your existing Blazor, uh, sorry, ASP.NET Core web forms application to Blazor server application. So all the code is on server. So in this scenario, you can use the Blazor server. Third party Blazor components. Most of the third party Blazor components are available via NuGet. And we can use all the JavaScript libraries available um, for uh, uh, any web application in Blazor also using JavaScript interop. So JavaScript interop is a feature where we can call C sharp code in JavaScript and JavaScript code in C sharp. So all these features we can do in uh, Blazor uh, itself, whether it is Blazor server or Blazor WebAssembly. And uh, the Blazor specific libraries are like open source libraries. Many open source libraries are, are available. Uh, Blazorize is one of them. Then we have Matte Blazor. Then we have Rads and Blazor controls. So all these three are like Matte Blazor and Blazorize are open source. Matte Blazor basically uses Material UI. So those of you who are fond of Material UI or Material Design, they can use Matte Blazor for that. Uh, those of you who want to use uh, like uh, Bootstrap based UI, uh, Blazor by default support Bootstrap based UI. But uh, I personally choose Blazorize to use because Blazorize is again open source and it suppose, m supports more uh, CSS library than Matte Blazor because Blazorize supports Bluma, Bootstrap, and even your uh, mat, uh, material design. Uh, whereas Matte Blazor is only specific to material design. Then there is Rads and Blazor controls. So Rads and Blazor controls I specifically listed here because these are of course free controls. So you can use these Rads and Blazor controls as free controls. But one benefit you have, so those of you who are working in companies and who want to go for low code or faster low code, no code development. So there is one Rads and UI generator or Rads and uh, UI. So you can search for Rads and uh, uh, and you can get a there is a rads and ui generator using which uh, you can create a whole blazor application using a drag and drop feature so that is there so you can utilize you can even implement no code or low code development using blazor server and rads and so that is one of the benefit of using rads and then our usual uh, usual vendors of ui that is your uh, Infragistic, Sync Fusion, Telerik, all of these have created Blazor specific uh, UI controls, which you can utilize in your regular Blazor application. Now let's talk about the possibilities of Blazor, what all we can develop using Blazor. So when we talk about uh, Blazor, we have right now client side development available using Blazor WebAssembly and server side uh, development using Blazor server. Then there is, you can develop Blazor desktop application using electron.net or using web window. So web window is another experimental framework which uh, create which helps you create cross platform desktop applications using Blazor or any JavaScript framework just like electron. Uh, it's experimental and it's also developed by Steve Sanderson who created uh, Blazor. So this is web window is also available as a NuGet package. So using web window, you can create cross platform desktop application. The only requirement for using web window is that you need to have a Chromium based uh, browser on your machine. So if you have installed Edge Chromium on your machine, whether it is Android, uh, sorry, whether it is Mac or Linux or Windows, then web window will work directly. Uh, whereas Electron basically ship its own Chromium based browser along with their framework itself. However, web window, uh, the footprint of web window is very smaller to uh, Electron. So when you create a Blazor plus Electron desktop application, uh, the setup or the whole footprint of that application would be around 150 megs or uh, 120 megs. Whereas when you create a Blazor plus web window application, the footprint of that application would be around 20, 25 megs, not more than that. So you can try that. It is uh, like uh, not committed uh, as of now that when it will be released or, but people are of course using Blazor plus Electron very much. 
blazor plus web window is uh, like uh, used by people like me who are uh, experimenting with blazor so those people uh, use blazor plus web window but it is there so you can de create desktop applications also using blazor another thing is blazor mobile binding which was uh, like announced in uh, blazor full day conference which happened in january uh, of this year so blazor mobile binding using blazor mobile binding you can create native uh, mobile applications for android and ios using blazor itself so uh, not the same ui you have to write separate ui for mobile of course but it has the controls similar uh, and the structure similar to your blazor application so they are also you can uh, use the layouts and then there are stack controls uh, checklist controls and all the separate controls available using which you can create blazor mobile application so you can use the blazor mobile bindings to create uh, android and ios mobile application under the hood of course it uses uh, xamarin uh, for creating the ui so these are the possibilities with blazor so you can use blazor in so many ways not only this uh, people uh, like uh, 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 there was one community uh, presentation uh, i forgot the name james no his name i think gordon uh, something from australia he presented that how he has used blazor and uh, xamarin to create a complete end to end application whether it is mobile and web application using blazor server and xamarin and he has shared the most of the code the nvvm code the code logic of uh, changing the ui from the uh, view model so all those things can be done you if you are using blazor as uh, your development framework so how should we get started with blazor so to get started with blazor we have a visual studio 2019 by default when you install visual studio 2019 with asp.net it will uh, like you will have the blazor projects uh, included in it and you can visit the official doc site that is blazor.net there you can get the step by step guide on how to get started with blazor apart from this there is there are a lot of community docs available like this steven tree crammer awesome blazor and then Adrian Torres Awesome Blazor both of this github libraries have lost list of all the blazor uh, contribution done by community as well as microsoft it has list of all the various tutorials available and everything so these all uh, this is using these all resources you can get started with blazor very easily so i think i have completed on time i finished it uh in almost 40 minute i guess and uh, we are done so any questions i am ready for questions now that was super fast <laughs> yeah uh, uh, yeah me and durgesh as well so that they are also watching the twitter uh, to see any questions and um, okay let me add some questions for you yeah okay This is a question. Can we use Blazor assembly assembly to hit REST API like Node, Java, or Go? Yes, of course we can do that. As I showed here, my uh, I, I need to like I I can open. As I said, I have created applications using Blazor Web Assembly, and right now there is one client application which is running using Web, Blazor Web Assembly. So yes, we can hit REST APIs using Blazor. You have that system dot uh, net dot http available as a NuGet. So you can just use the the same way you call uh, REST APIs in Xamarin. Uh, you can use the REST APIs in Blazor also using the HTTP client. So I have done that, and you can do that also. and then there is uh, if you are using blazor web assembly uh, and the preview version of dotnet core then you can also get one library called system dotnet dot mvc blazor http client which supports you uh, which uh, which has integration of http client and your uh, system dot text dot json so you can uh, use the json async and get json async post json async those are methods you can use from blazor web assembly but that is experimental i personally use uh, system.net.http client which is the default uh, client for using uh, or calling web assembly uh, sorry uh, calling rest apis from your windows or web applications in dotnet core so you using that you can you uh, call the rest apis okay so <clears throat> we have another question 
what are the development options with Blazor in cloud? So when we are using deployment options, okay, deployment options. So when we are using a uh, Blazor in cloud, we can deploy uh, anywhere where we are using .NET Core. So if you have a .NET Core server, uh, you can deploy it uh, there. Uh, so it can be deployed on a Linux machine. It can be, if you are using Blazor WebAssembly, it can be deployed at a static site also. So you can deploy your Blazor WebAssembly code, uh, web, Blazor WebAssembly application as a static site on GitHub pages, or you can deploy it on your uh, like uh, AWS volume, uh, your uh, shared spaces and then you can give a URL and you can utilize it. So that is for Blazor WebAssembly. For Blazor server, you will require a proper .NET Core server. So you can it can be a self-hosted .NET Core server on a Linux machine or you can use app service which is given by uh, your Azure. You can even host in IIS. So like right now my current project implementation which I'm, uh, I have done for my client, I have hosted the Blazor server on IIS. So you can also host it on IIS. It, you, it can be hosted on app service. It can be hosted as a self-hosted service. So whatever, uh, so Blazor server can be hosted in all the different ways uh, a .NET Core or ASP.NET Core uh, application is uh, web application is hosted in the same way Blazor can be hosted and Blazor WebAssembly can be hosted as a progressive web application or static site. So these are all hosting options available. Cool. Um, does Blazor support single page applications and lazy loading features? Blazor is uh, based on single page architecture itself. As I showed you that Blazor uses single page architecture and everything is a component. So yes, it supported. Uh, it supports uh, single page architecture, and it is based on single page architecture. Regarding lazy loading, I am not very much sure about it, uh, but I think it is coming up in uh, with .NET five. Um, can you tell the main difference between JavaScript and Blazor? JavaScript, uh, you have to like the main difference between JavaScript and Blazor is uh, like using JavaScript, you can access the, you can't uh, like, you can use the UI, you can change the UI similar, but you have to use JavaScript for that. But in case of Blazor, you can write C sharp and Razor code to call your, uh, to manipulate your DOM or uh, to manage your component. So, the primary difference is that you can use C-sharp code. Instead of JavaScript, you can use C-sharp code. Uh, and JavaScript is also available. So that is uh, one of the added advantage that when you are using Blazor, you have C-sharp, Razor, and JavaScript available uh, for your users. Whereas when you are just using JavaScript, then you have only JavaScript available for users. And for that, you need to know about JavaScript frameworks. That is your, uh, whether it is jQuery or your Angular or React. So all these, you need to know about nitty gritties of those frameworks. Whereas when you are using uh, Blazor, you just need to know about C-sharp syntax and uh, yeah. uh, like small uh, JavaScript, yeah, if sorry, needed. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I missed some questions from, um, from before, so I'm just gonna add it back. Uh, mm -hmm. Does Blazor, run on Kestrel? Yes, the Blazor uh, run, of course, run on Kestrel. Uh, like I didn't show you the example, but Blazor servers, uh, Blazor server run on Kestrel because as I said, Blazor server uses the ASP.NET Core hosting model or whatever features are available in ASP.NET Core. Those all are by default available in Blazor server. So Blazor server runs on Kestrel. Blazor WebAssembly doesn't run on Kestrel. It's like uh, it can run on Kestrel also, but it is by default the whole code is downloaded on the client side. So like uh, it run on the uh, browser of the client, but uh, it can be hosted on Kestrel just like Blazor uh, server. Cool. Um, one question, does Blazor support server side rendering? If yes, do we need to do any changes on server side or will it take care of will it take care from blazor itself so if you are using blazor server it of course support blazor uh, server side rendering by default and there are a couple of methods in the host.chtml where you can use either server uh, rendered or server pre-rendered or blazor server so these three methods are there by default it is blazor server setup and all the rendering is done on the server itself so basically the way blazor works is 
a blazor server works is like it create it uh, does a diff between the ui changes uh, via a signalr connection and uh, update only those ui which is being changed so these things are done very fast so all the uh, rendering is done on the server this is only in case of uh, this uh, blazor server in case of blazor web assembly everything is done on the client side itself sure um okay i think we answered that how okay let me add this how blazor is different from dotnet core mvc which one is better to use for project s um, i think as per performance uh blazor see blazor is different uh, from mvc is that because mvc is not a single page architecture based uh, framework uh, basically mvc uses uh, multiple page architecture where you move on uh, different pages of course uh, it routing is there and all those things is there but blazor server uses like single page architecture component based architecture it uses so blazor component you can reuse the blazor component in blazor web assembly as well as uh, blazor server so uh, of course my suggestion would be that if you are going to use uh, like you are going to create a new asp.net core application then you should go with blazor rather than Bla mvc because uh, blazor has much more uh, you can say uh, you can say much more versatility to be used at different places uh, than mvc so using mvc you can just create web applications uh, whereas using blazor you can create different kind of applications also but architecture is different in case of mvc you have multiple routed application it uses mvc architecture whereas in blazor it's single page architecture based application so it's it's more comparable to you can say angular react uh, based application where you have components so it's more comparable to that so thank you so much ravi that was a great presentation